Uh, thank you for the Ghani, uh, to the Ghani Station for letting me uh, come into to this event. Um, right, uh, for those of you who were just today at the book presentation, uh, this goes in line with what I I said yesterday. Um, but uh, going deeper in that um, comparison between the, the full globe that we share, some some countries from across the the, the Atlantic shore share especially in this case, the, the Isle of Man. Okay, so um, this presentation is based on the um, Contos de Ella de Man, this is a translation of Max Fairy Tales that I've accomplished this year. Um, that is a lot more than a word for word translation, but uh, is a way of putting in comments on parts of both cultures. Okay, so let's just start with it. Um, I guess everybody knows where the Isle of Man is, just in case, and I'm going to ask you that. Okay, so as you can see, it's such a small country. Um, small in the sense that when you live there, after two months, you know everybody. So it's like meeting everyone, uh, like going to the same events, because it's the only thing you can do. Um, but they have very rich vocal and very rich linguistic background. They are trying to um, revitalized. That's the Manx language, the Gaelic language. Right. Um, this work, the Manx fairy tales, uh, uh, were compiled by the ethnographer Sophia Morrison. Okay, which is um, who who was a very very important character in in the society of the Isle of Man, because apart from being a woman. Um, she was the co-founder of um, and secretary of the, um, the Max Language uh, Association, um, and she was always in charge of, um, of being sure that the, the, the Isle of Man was included in the, the, um, the Celtic gatherings okay, um, at that time. Um, as I mentioned, um, she is the, the author, the, the compilator of the Max fairy tales. Uh, in a time when the Manx language started to disappear, and so it, we only had remains of the language, even though it was spoken as a second language, but by so many, so, some people, was no, let's say, um, language to the, as, as it can be uh, in, in other cases where two languages coexist. Okay, so they were coexisting, but one of them was, was dying out. Um, uh, at that time, English has been mixed with um, with Manx to such a level that they they had a special dialect there. That's English variation that it, we call anglo manx that includes um, some some characteristics of the Manx language, but nothing to do with morphology, syntax, or, um, or or anything like that. It's just some vocabulary, some expressions that are included there. Right, um, what I'm going to do here today, I don't know why this appears like that, um, is talking about the uh, folklore elements in common with Galicia. Galicia uh, is, is, is to be considered as one of the Celtic nations, basically because of the ancestral connection of the regions of the Atlantic shore. Okay, so um, the inclusion of Galicia as one of the Celtic nations has been controversial due mainly to linguistic reasons. Um, when we talk about the Celtic nations, we usually talk about those places where the uh, Gaelic language is, is kept. Obviously, it's not kept in Galicia, okay? Uh, actually, the existence of a Galician um, Celtic language cannot be assured. The only thing that we can provide are some, some linguistic remains in the language, okay? Um, in the current Romanist language, Romans language. Um, Celticism in Galician is actually determined, no by um, the language, but by uh, archaeological findings and folklore ele elements. So we can say that culture, but not lingua culture, is the glue here. Um, there are some researchers, such as uh, Alberto or uh, Alfonso Romero, who have been working on the establishment of, of these connections for decades. Um, I can say that they cannot be denied nowadays. 
Right. Um, within this compilation of tales, um, I am now I'm going to talk about all the um, all, all the the, um, the the mythology or the parts that we have in common. Just have chosen a couple of them of them because uh, we are running out of time as usual. Um, and one of these is 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 the, the black dog, the Mordidu. The Mordidu, <coughs> the black dog, is um, is popular in in, uh, in European folklore. It's quite common. Devils, devil dogs in 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 English is the Welsh um, usually. Um, it also um, is the the Cushy from the heavy days. Is the family of the Norse mythology the the, the one that killed. Uh, Odin. Um, of course, uh, those of you who are familiar with uh, Harry Potter, I guess everybody, uh, you may think about the Grimm in in the third book, the, the Prisoner of Azkaban, uh, where um, Sirius Black is is represented as the Grimm. Uh, the Grimm is not an invention by uh, J.K. Rowling, but it's a real um, myth. That um, that guards the um, the cemeteries in in the British Isles and in some Nordic countries, um, and also don't forget the hang of the basket, please. Right. So what we have here is uh, a tale um, that tells the story of um, of the black dog coming to the field castle and um, killing one supposed to kill the one of the, the soldiers, okay? Um, we are not told how. Uh, so what we can see here, the, the parallelisms, is that we also have the, this uh, big black dog in Galician uh, tradition. We don't call it uh, multitude, of course. We call it the Urco. I don't know, it's a it's, um, Basque name. It's not related at all, at all I think. <laughs> Just in case, be careful. Um, the Galician Urco lives uh, in the sea. It's supposed to be found in the um, Punta Vedra Bay in an isle called uh, Borrón. Um, and has a, hammer, uh, um, a summer home in, in Peninsula de Barbanza. It's um, in Acurota, which is a mountain. It's um, um, a cave under the water. Okay, so he lives there. Okay, that's quite near my house, so I'm, I'm happy to be alive. Um, and the other dog, the, the Mordidu, lives in the sea. We are not told where in the, in the, um, the tales, but Peel Castle is placed in an, in an isle, in a, uh, so it's surrounded by, by water. So if you want to get there, you have to go by sea. Uh, both of them appear at night. Um, both of them are considered as bad omens and bad omens, okay, as we could be um, seeing in, in the tale. Okay. Now, moving on, uh, talking about all the animals, uh, I have to talk about the wren. Okay. The wren is uh, no classic to the um, British Isles because it already appears in Aesop's fables as, as the king of all birds. And the... Um, the story the, mm, that Sophia Morrison um, uh, included in, in her book um, is actually about how the wren became the king of all birds by uh, tricking the eagle. Um, if we think about it in other parts of the British Isles, it is considered as a saying in Ireland. Um, and destroying that nest or killing them implied implies bad luck. Okay, so uh, comparing the Galician and the monks uh, ran the leaves, okay, so no to damage, both of them, okay, and um, the, um, the monks has, have the hunting the ran tradition that was has been recovered because it was kind of forgotten from some years, uh, which is quite festive, it's celebrated on St. Stephen's Day, so they go early in the morning around the, the, the country, indeed, uh, dancing with the ram's pool, which is a very um, nice, nicely decorated um, uh, pool with a ram, that one we saw before, in the middle. 
okay, um, singing the run, the run, the king of all birds. We caught it, we caught on St. Stephen's Day in the woods. That was his small, his family's money. We pray you, good woman, give us a drop to drink. So um, on, in, in other traditions, uh, what uh, they were asking for was for some money for, uh, to provide rent a proper burial because he, he was the king. Um, in English and tradition, um, the hunt and the run part was somehow missing, okay, but it existed, okay. So we had what we called the, the hunting of King Charlo. King Charlo as a reference maybe to Carlo Magno. And this happens around, around Christmas too, okay. So was basically a ram was hunted and tied to sick or lock and the inhabitants of the parish visited the, the priest and offered it to him. The priest gave them wine and bread, so clear parallelism here, okay. Then they went to the city hall and proposed four men to become the new mayor. Uh, and usually in the Galician tradition, the realm was left, was, um, um, he, he was not killed. Okay, so uh, had a very happy life after this, in some cases. Um, then, uh, now let's talk about some beliefs. Um, this, I uh, have included here, this um, uh, illustration belongs to the book too. Okay, this is the story of a man who was quite upset because suddenly he, his cows, which were the best cows in, in, the, in town, um, were exhausted and not giving milk at all. Okay, so uh, he was thinking about the evil eye. Okay, so the evil eye, we know, evil eye is present in, in, in all cultures. Uh, it, it can affect humans and non-humans, and is very related to death and, and fertility, okay, as to uh, confront it, um, things, okay, so dead, Oh, fertility kills that, fertility kills the uh, evil eye, okay? So most of the symbols we use to counteract the evil eye are related to sexual um, elements. So um, we could talk for ages about the Galician and uh, evil eye, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, so basically considering what we can find here in, in these tales, so we have the um, collecting dust from a full road crossing, okay, that is both exactly the same up here in the tails, so just go there and you threw it over the infected animals. Um, this is obviously related to the, the, um, the passing of people, okay, so the death and the life and the, the alive crossing their ways in the, the crossroads, the, the crossroads. Uh, um, in Galician tradition, it's called by Mancineiros, among other names. In, in Manx tradition, it's Cuba fairy, fairy daughters. Um, another, other names that we can find is Maldo Aire, Meigallo. Um, we can find the fairy shot, which is physically a narrow. Okay, uh, can be caused by animals, people, or supernatural beings. Um, um, a man's tradition, even though I have not found um, um, animals, because what I have found is um, fairy pig, which is not exactly an animal. It's a supernatural being, can be caused by people or supernatural be beings. Also something that appears in the, the, the tales that uh, appears also in Galician tradition is the use of salt, because salt preserves um, against uh, it and against evil in, in general. Right, um, continuing with this, with beliefs, I have to talk about the, the, the Shlua, uh, which is the, the night procession of, of the death. It is present in all the Celtic wood. Uh, in this case, what are, I'm using here these images from a popular Galician um, um, uh, artist, <laughs> Davila, uh, who um, represents um, parts of you know, uh, our daily life. And uh, this, the, the, the Galician version of the Shlua is, is actually part of our daily life. It's 
um, it always uh, has a, 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 a person, a group to life with them, okay? So he, this person, for those of you who cannot speak English, is basically complaining that he was chosen to go with them, but he's not given a proper outfit to go, so he, he had to brought the, his some um, outfit. Okay, um, we, the Galicians call it Santa Compagna. Um, the man's call it Sheed, um, even though um, it's not always identified as so. Um, it's, um, it's made of penitent souls, okay? In the monk's fairy tales, it's identified with the little people. The little people are the fairies. They are not the fairies, okay? It's fairies is, is a word that Sophia Morrison uses, so people can understand the concept, but uh, the manx fairies are not fairies, are little people, mischievous, angry people, uh, supernatural people with strange powers. Um, a living person accompanies them in, in Galician tradition. Um, in manx, in this manx tale, um, that's a living person who helps them. Uh, it's a dead omen, and, and what uh, happened to this uh, person in, in the tale, for this um, um, shoemaker, actually. Um, the, the little people in, in the tale were, uh, were grateful because uh, one of them helped them and the other uh, just uh, tried to trick them and they were very vicious at him. <coughs> right, so as I said, well, I wasn't <laughs> as brief as I thought. Um, when we compare, okay, about the uh, Galician and Manx folklore, we have to consider that we share some beliefs and, and myths, that some of them are, uh, are included in Morrison's compilation of Manx fairy tales, and that both universes uh, live in their native language. Native languages that are Galician and Manx, one of them in Danger, Okay, Manx language uh, has native speakers again, which is something very good. Uh, but they are trying to create a new generation of, of, of Manx speakers who, who can speak Manx as a native language, or at least as a language too. And just to finish, as we are in the Basque country, um, I wanted uh, to, to use this image that, I don't know if you can see it, the name of the, of the boat. Can you? No? Can you read? Ondarwa. Okay, the, the Ondarwa was a, um, a American ship from the Naviera Vizcaina that I guess some of you can be familiar with. Okay, um, the, the monks live uh, by the sea and from the sea. Okay, uh, as as uh, my, my father was in, in this, uh, in this um, ship, uh, and this, um, this was involved in, uh, in a war in the, in the 70s, in the Indo-Pakistani war. It was attacked, attack, uh, attacked and, and sunk. My father survived, okay, uh, but this is the last photo we have of, of, the, of the boat, because obviously it's, it's not with us anymore. <laughs> Um, and I wanted to finish with uh, this saying the, um, the monks have when they go to sea, because um, it's not that you are going and you get some, um, you, you are able to, to take profit. It's, uh, sometimes the profit is coming back. Um, Manana Maglia is uh, the founder of the Isle of Man. That's why it's the Isle of Man, it's the Isle of Mananan. Okay, and they say, little Mananam, song of the sea, who blessed our island, blessed us and our boat, going out well, coming in better, with living and death in our boat. Thank you. Thank you.